Now that we have discussed the measures of center, we're going to talk about measures of spread and measures of variability, which are the same thing, they're just two different names that you'll hear used interchangeably. So measures of spread are additional ways to describe data sets, and like I just said, you might also hear them referred to as measures of variability. And what measures of spread do is to help tell how far apart the pieces of data are from the center of the data, those things that we just found earlier, the mean, median, and mode. The first measure of spread that we're going to find is going to be the easiest, and that's the range. To find the range, all you have to do is put the numbers in order from least to greatest, and you're going to subtract the smallest number from the biggest number. So let's go ahead and look at the example that we have here in example 6. First thing we're going to want to do is put these numbers in order. So we're going to have 7, 8, 12, 18, 19, 21, and 32. So all we have to do to find the range is take our biggest number, which is 32. You'll also hear the biggest number sometimes referred to as the maximum. And we're going to take away the smallest number, which is also referred to as the minimum. So we're going to do 32 minus 7, and that's going to give us 25. And that's all I have to do for the range. The range is 25. And I have my answer. So that should be pretty simple and easy. Since that was so quick and easy, we are going to look at one other thing within this video, and that's going to be a different type of range that's also a measure of spread or variability, and that's going to be called the interquartile range, also known as the IQR for short. A lot of times we don't like writing out interquartile range because it's so long, so we will just refer to it as the IQR. Now before we can find the interquartile range, we have to talk about something called quartiles. And what we're going to do is we're going to have to find these different quartiles, and we're going to label them as the first, second, and third quartile. And let's just go ahead and walk through this whole process together. So in example 7, we're asked to find the interquartile range of the following data set. So the first thing I'm going to do, like with most of this data set stuff, is to go ahead and put this data in order. So I'm going to list these from least to greatest. I'm going to have 11, 12, 14, 17, 18, 19, 21, 21, and 30. Our next step is going to be to find the median. We talked about this in video one. We start on the left and the right, and we cross out one at a time. So I'm going to cross out one from the left, one from the right, one from the left, one from the right, another from the left, another from the right, another from the left, and another from the right. I've crossed out four on each side, and that's going to leave me with just 18 in the middle. So my median is going to be 18, and the other name that we have for this is going to be our second quartile. So anytime you see the median or the second quartile, those are going to be the same thing. You might also see it referred to as Q2. So we found the median. The next thing we're going to have to do is to find the first quartile. So what the first quartile is going to be is going to be the middle number of the bottom half of the data. It's almost like we're finding the median again, only we're just looking at the left side of the data. So we are not going to include our median of 18. We're just going to be looking on the left side of this and find the median of that. And we're going to go about it the very similar way. I'm going to cross out my 11 over here. I'm going to cross out my 17 over here. Now you'll notice I'm left with two numbers in between, the 12 and the 14. So if you think back to how we found the median on that, I'm going to have to add those together and divide by 2. So I'm going to do 12 plus 14 divided by 2. And that's going to give me 26 over 2, which will give me 13. So our Q1, or our first quartile, is going to be 13, and that's going to fall right there in between those data sets. So I'm going to need that for the next piece, but before I can move on from here, I'm also going to have to find the quartile 3, or Q3. So just like we found the median of the bottom half for Q1, we're going to find the median of the top half for Q3. So again, since 18 was my median, I'm not going to include that. I'm going to include just the numbers above it, so I'm going to cross out 19 and 30, and again it leaves me with two different numbers. 
Now technically I would add those two together and divide by 2, but if you think critically about these, both of those are the same number, so if I add them up and divide by 2, I'm going to get the same thing that I started with. Uh, so I can go ahead and say that Q3 is going to be 21. Alright, now my last step is to take Q3, and you can ignore that because I don't know what I was writing there, <laughs> but we're going to take Q3 minus Q1. So I'm going to go back to what I had up here. My Q3 was 21. I'm going to subtract Q1, which was 13. I'm going to subtract those, and that's going to give me 8. So my IQR, or interquartile range, is going to be 8. So just to summarize, we have to first find the median after we put the numbers in order. Once we find the median, we find the middle of the top half and the middle of the bottom half. Those give us Q1 and Q3. And we're going to subtract Q3 minus Q1. Now let's just talk hypothetically. Let's say that there had been one more number in your data set. Let's just make up a data set here and say that we had an even number of data. Let's say 2, 4, 8... 10, 12, and 14. And your median fell right here in between, and your median was 9. When you find your Q1 and your Q3, you would still use the 8, and you would still use the 10 on either half of the data. Because our median was here in the middle, that 9 is going to be what we don't include. You would include them here, so you cross out the 2 and the 8, and you get 4, and you cross out the 10 and the 14, and you would get 12, and you would do 12 minus 4 to get the interquartile range of 8. So that's just an example of what would happen if you did have an even number of numbers to start out with. Uh, if the median itself is found, like up here, and it's circled, then we don't include it. But if the median falls between the two data sets, like that little short example I did super quick right there, then you do include the numbers on either side. All right, we do have two UTRA videos for you guys to give an attempt. Then we have one more video for this lesson, and then we'll be done. See you guys there.